Welcome to But Jesus Drank Wine and other stories that kept us stuck. I'm Mead. And I'm Christy. In this podcast, we'll explore the stories that kept us, well, stuck, wanting to drink and not wanting to drink all at the same time. Join us as we show you that freedom from alcohol does not have to mean a life sentence of misery and missing out, but actually means living an authentic life full of peace, joy, and purpose. Welcome, my beautiful friends. We have Brittany and her amazing skincare with us today. <laughs> Brittany Estes has a passion for women and desires to see them grow in their faith while standing confidently as women God called them to be. As a life coach, speaker, and writer, she has helped champion women all over the country. She wants women to find hope and freedom. Her book, Flip the Script, released last month. It's like a year old now, right? Last yeah. March. Yeah. She's been married to her high school sweetheart for 18 years. They're both in ministry. She lives in Houston, Texas. And you guys, she has eight kids. <laughs> Talking about before we hit record. How do you do that, babe? How? Uh, it's chaos. It's chaos. There's moments where I'm just like, I need everyone to tell me all the things. And we like sit down and have a meeting to plan everything out. We do have a rule. So I know you asked earlier me, like, how do you make it happen? The rule is we can't have stuff pop up within 24 hours. <laughs> like if you oh want to go God. to someone's house, you do these things. I need to know by this point because we have too many moving parts to be like, yes, you can do this. Yes, you can do this. So brilliant. Not, not that. I want to institute that rule and I've only got two kids. No, it's yeah. a great plan. It's a great plan. But teenagers suck at that plan. So yeah. you have to like, yes, approach them into this is the rhythm, which honestly, I feel like it's training them for adulthood. Yeah. Like, hey, you yeah. have to show up and do these things and you have to plan. <laughs> so I'm like, I just, it's actually for mama's help. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's so hard because they almost, they make their own plans together without yes. talking to any adults. Uh -huh. So I feel like I'm always talking to Ella and she has this whole full blown plan, but no adults know about it and no adults are exactly. on board. <laughs> so exactly. Like, you're almost uh -huh. like, come to me with a form, like a fully formed plan 24 hours in advance that the other adult has also approved. Yes. Man, teenagers. Yeah. I love it. We were all teens once. Like I sit and I talk to my parents. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm pretty sure I was a lot like this too. And I thought I knew all the answers and had all the plans. And so then when they would shoot me down, I'm like, no, you can't do this. I was like, oh, they're the worst. And now as a parent, I'm like, oh, I was the worst. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Oh my God. We've been trying to get you on here for a while now. <laughs> It's 24 hour notice, guys. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, your book is so incredible. And I was lucky enough to meet you, I think, when it had just maybe gone for pre-order. It was just like a brand new thing. And and since then, I've just watched the amount of women just through your social media who have said how this has helped them and set them free. And what I think is so cool about it is it's not just like women at like our age it's like literally like grandmas and 10 year olds and like everything in between. And it's so cool. The craziest thing, because I wrote the book, you remember, you heard me talk about it. Like I wrote it for just the college age girl up to our age kind of thing. This was my sweet spot. This is where I wanted it. And then I really felt like I was like, that's cute. Like you're playing too small. <laughs> and I have had 70 year old women message me and say, this book is incredible. I wish I had this 20 years ago or whatnot. I've actually had men say, this book is not just for women. And I'm, I love that. But at the same time, I feel really guilty because I'm like, it's an extremely girly cover. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had no idea, but like wives will read it and then give it to their husbands. Oh my gosh. And I've had even guys who don't have wives read it and they're just like, no, this is good information. And I was like, oh, yes, it is. It is great information. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my gosh. I mean, just to just the ripple effect of it has blown my mind. And I'm just I'm so thankful. Like it, it never like becomes something small or insignificant when someone reaches out to me and is like, this meant so much, or I cried through this, or I did this. And I'm like, oh yes, no, I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Every single word of encouragement or comment or things like that. I'm, that's why I did it. I didn't do it for me. I didn't do it for to publish a book. That's incredible. Like the life change was what it was all about. And the life change is what made me write it. The hope of that. Yeah. So good. Can you talk about a little bit about like your backstory? Because just like Mead and I struggled with alcohol, that's why we talk about it, right? To help yeah, others. Yeah. 
I know that this idea of getting stuck in a false narrative about your true worth was something that you definitely grappled with and had to overcome. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So there was a season of life when I'm okay. I've always been, I said this one time, I'm extra and I'm a lot. And our mutual friend, Christy and I's mutual friend, Jess Connolly was like, stop, you're not extra. There's nothing extra about you. That implies that it's a bad thing. And I was like, oh, you're right. So even now I'm like, ooh, how do I say this? I'm outgoing. I'm, I don't know, flamboyant, whatever that is. Anyway, I do have a big personality and I'm fun and I'm a lot. And all my life, I've always been met with their moments of opposition where someone doesn't want to be my friend because of this, or a boy didn't like me because of this, or my teachers would get mad at me. And it was always this narrative that there was something wrong with me. And there was a moment that kind of boiled up. Sam and I were at a church and one of the people that he worked with called him into the office and was like shoving his finger down his chest and stuff and yelling at him, telling him that he wouldn't have a job if he couldn't get control of me because I was too loud and I was, I should be a quiet wife sitting on the pew and things like that. And I loved like when Sam does ministry, my husband, we would do it together. So I'd get up on the stage and do things with him because I'm good at doing things on the stage. Like I yeah, love you, those things. You're really good. At it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We work really well together, but it was always for, this is the purpose. It wasn't like, so Brittany could have fame. It was, this is the ministry and this is how God made us to work together. And it was beautiful. And so that moment, like, really rocked me because everything I did from that point was under a microscope. How was she acting? Was she talking or posting about herself? What was she wearing and things? Because it wasn't like just on me. It was when my husband have a job, would my family be provided for if I did the wrong thing? And it sent me down a spiral. And that's the whole reason why this, the flip the script is a point because that moment was huge. But what Satan does is he ties that moment to all those things in the past where it was like, you are actually the problem. Do you remember here? Do you remember here? And it like looped down like a lit trail all the way through my past. And I was like, you're right. It is absolutely me. Not, hey, this guy should not have done that. Shouldn't have handled that like that. Like your mind just goes, you're right, I'm the problem. And you just spiral in all these negative narratives. And it took a lot of work, a lot of counseling, a lot of time with the Lord to rebuild that. But honestly, in this season, I'm so thankful for that moment because what I have built now, like the Lord was like, we're going to build this and we're going to build it strong. And I didn't know at the time I was going to write a book. I didn't know at the time that I'd be speaking and doing all these things, but you have got to have a thick skin to do all that because people will come in and like question you and call you out. Pink hair alone makes it where it's like, people are like, are you sure you're not doing this for yourself? Like you don't want people to see you. And I'm like, no, let me tell you the story on why it's pink. Let me do these things. It's genuinely... I love it. This is just who I am. But it's built such a thick skin to go, no, this is what I'm here for. And we can't shake it. And so it was in those dark places that the Lord was like, we're going to build something stronger. And he has. And out of that, it's just made me be able to see and spot lies that women or people in general are believing, okay, let's call them out. Let's fix it and let's flip it. And so that's where this book was birthed out of. So good. It's so good. Wait, I want to, now I want to hear the story of the pink hair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Love. My very favorite color. But what? Yeah. Story? In like 2011. So like I've had it for a long time. I went to a conference, Jess's conference. Like literally I've known Jess Connolly for 10, 15 years kind of thing. But they did a conference called Influence Conference back in the day when Twitter was the only thing we had going for us. And so <laughs> moms with like little kids would just be all <laughs> tweeting each other all day. That's where this conference came from. It was like, how do you have your influence here where you're at? Whatever that looks like. Well, when we were there, a company called Able, the, they had like denim and leather hand goods and things like that came. And Barrett Ward was the owner. I'm pretty sure he's still the owner, founder of it. But what they do is it's a um, fair trade business. And so in Ethiopia, they would help empower women to make these bags and do these things, give them a, a job. And then we would buy them over here. But the best part about it was is they would free women from the sex industry over there. They would give them holistic care. So it was counseling, physical things, mental things. Then they would teach them a trade so they wouldn't have to go back and do that. So it wasn't like, we're just going to take you off the streets now. Good luck with life. It was, no, here's how you build a life from this point. And he offered all the bloggers at the time an opportunity to partner with them and do what was called a purpose project. And so what you would do is set a goal, like I want to raise this much money in a month's time. And he said, but the cool thing about it would be like, do something fun that you've always wanted to do if that goal was met. 
And so I'm sitting there and my husband is like going to school to be a pastor. I have four kids at the time. And I was like, always wanted to have pink hair. But like, when is that ever going to be acceptable? <laughs> like, I'm driving a minivan. My husband's a pastor. Like, none of this makes sense. <laughs> and I was like, if I met the goal and I had pink hair, then people, if they had a problem with it, I'd be like, but let me tell you why it's pink. Like, you can't be mad at that. And it may be horrible. It may be gross, whatever. But I just always wanted to try it. So I'll try it. So in one month's time, my goal was to free four women from the sex industry. That would be $1,600. And in one month, we ended up freeing eight. And it was incredible. Like the power of the internet, like I've never seen it come together back in that day so strongly than through that effort. And it was so amazing. So I was like, okay, great. Now I've got to go pink. And so I went to my hairstylist and I was like, let's got a good shade. Let's do these things. And I dyed it pink going, okay, this is probably, I know my parents are going to hate it. I know like my husband's going to hate it. We're just going to go for it. And literally everyone was like, oh, the way it should have been always. (laughs) <laughs> like this is your color like how oh my gosh and so it's been various shades of pink since then but literally for that long I've just been pink I can't go back now just who I am yeah people ask and they have a sometimes people are like ah, I don't know if I like it I'm like, let me tell you why and they're like that's actually really cool and the generation like the older ladies and stuff that I thought might actually have a problem with it they're the ones who love it the most they're like <laughs> oh my gosh I love your hair so much yeah that's how it became pink I love it so you have know. children who've never seen you without pink without hair. Without pink hair. Oh my <laughs> God, I know. And I think about that sometimes. I'm like, oh, wow, you don't know That's a world cool. outside of this. They'll go to school so and they cool. tell their friends like, my mom has pink hair. And the friends are like, nah, no, she doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's not pink. And they're like, no, really it is. And so they'll Google me because I put on the internet <laughs> and pull it up. Like all these pictures of me, they're like, and here she is, pink hair. And I'm like, cool. You can Amazing. Google your mother. That's weird. <laughs> I love it. It was so cool. So I have a question. So in light of, because this is where we stay, this is what we talk about all the time. We first identified, we have all these stories about alcohol that keep us stuck with alcohol. Yeah. And then in finding freedom from alcohol, oh wait, I actually have all these stories about all the things that you were talking about that kind of go back way, way back and then start to tangle together and yeah. things keep get adding on. In light of a situation like yours or like ours where it brings our awareness to these stories. Like how does one go about identifying what stories might be keeping them in a stuck place right now? What is, what are your, where would someone start with that? A little shameless plug. You could definitely hire me as a coach. (laughs) That's actually what I'm good at. I'm an inner dialogue coach. So I help you literally identify the scripts and those lies and those things that you're believing. So then we can flip them and replace them with the truth of God's word. So it's, A lot of, sometimes people don't understand and know. So they'd come to me as a coach going, I want to help work and increase my business and things like that. And I'm stuck. So that's a keyword. People are like, I'm stuck. That's, and I'm like, okay, cool. There's more to this. And so as we start talking, I had one girl, I was talking to her about something and she was like, I want to do this. And I, I don't know. I just, I need to talk to you. And literally from that one moment we were talking about her business, somehow it flipped into something and she was hiding her past on, she had drug issues and things like that. And she didn't want people to know, like God had done such a crazy, amazing work in her, but she was afraid for this because deep down inside her dream was to help others in that. But she was too scared to share it because she thought people would look at her and go, oh, that was a drug addict. When all we saw was an incredible woman in this life. And so it's amazing. You don't understand Mm -hmm. you don't see it, but the moment you do it's, and that's the scary part is the moment you understand this is the lie then you start seeing it thread through your life. And if you don't have someone walk you through it, then you're going to be like, this is actually true. This Mm. is all I'm good to, good for. And then you'll play into that. So it just helps with understanding like, where am I stuck? What am I believing? And I've done it long enough. This sounds so weird. I can talk to someone. I'll be like, okay, cool. I know you're lying, but I can't tell you're lying. Like I can't be like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'll just ask leading questions. Like, okay, so what about this? Or tell me when was the last time you felt this or did that? And then it's, one of those moments and it just clicks. And once it clicks, that's beautiful. That's actually step one. That's the best part to be. But then you have to do the work of, okay, I'm not going to subscribe to that. If I'm being honest, and I say this in my book, it's a very day-to-day thing. Just with not drinking alcohol, at at the beginning, it's let me make this choice not to. Let me make this choice not to because it's your go-to. So you want to go back to it because that's all, that's your comfort, that's your whatever. That's the same with a lie. That's your comfort. It, it's not comforting, but this is just the truth that you've known. 
And so there's days where someone will come at me with a question or make a statement about me. And I'm like, am I, is this really true? And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, wait, no. Oh, that's not it. So like years past, I still have to recognize that because I think Satan's just, is there even a crack in this? Can I come back in? Because yeah. he knows this is my weak spot. Oh, so it's a word. So true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, I was going to say, I can think of, there's so many where I've done my work and untangled the stories, found freedom from the lies. And I'm like, I know truth is truth. And I can, but it's amazing. And I'm like, why does this keep, why does this come back around? Uh-huh. And I have to do yeah. this again. But uh-huh. the great thing about being free from alcohol is I'm awake, alert. I can, you know, spot it so much easily um, Absolutely. now. But I, I think so many of our listeners can relate to this idea of like where their, where their mind and the unconscious kind of things that are the thoughts that are swirling that are attached to deeper beliefs that are driving kind of the car of their life and yeah. And bringing awareness to that is really that kind of like first step. Yeah, absolutely. It's so good. Yeah, I always I always say that my favorite part about coaching around alcohol is that it actually has nothing to do with alcohol, right? Yep, absolutely. Because, yeah, because it's such a liar and it tells us so many lies and it and it, and they all end up going to the worth of the gal as a woman, as a person. Mm-hmm. And uncovering those is just such a it's just such a magical thing. But I think it's also so cool because the way that your book has spoken to so many generations, because nowadays, like we were talking before we hit record about like our teenagers, there's so many voices and there's so Mm -hmm. many things shouting at them about what they should do and what they should be. And I don't know. So I guess for the teenage, the moms of teens, let's say, Mm -hmm. listening, who are really worried about their teenagers and what they're letting in and how that's going to start this negative script. What, yes. how do you like them? And this is maybe not going to be something you want to hear as a mom. No, I do. I want to, it has to start with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally. First of all, I'm writing a book for teens. So that comes out in March, 2025. It's literally a teen version of flip the script. So it targets that age group. So until that moment comes, here's what you do is you have to be the one to model it. I said that in my book, that's literally why there was a moment where I had been mentoring some young adults. They were like 19 or or whatever. And in a week's time, one had like a nervous breakdown, very public nervous breakdown. We had to call the cops and things like that. And the other one tried to commit suicide and she had been institutionalized for that. And it was, oh my gosh, like I had seen them. Like I was working with them. What is happening? And it was one morning the Lord woke me up and the room was spinning. And he was like, do you not see? Here's a problem. I'm talking to a generation like us saying, here's your worth. Here's your purpose. We're out. You can do these things. And I'm like, meanwhile, our age group is so focused on us. We don't have this settled. This younger generation is drowning at rapid rates because they don't have someone to come and reach out and say, here's the way. Let me show you what truth is. Because there are so many things vying for their attention. Mm-hmm. There's social media. There's all the you know, public and the people and just the lies of Satan and whatever that works like. And so they're listening to all these things and they're so loud and yeah. they're everywhere that they are. And we're as parents going, I'm just struggling to make it through the day. Yeah. I'm beat down by all my life circumstances and all these things that we miss those and not like we intentionally miss them, but we do miss them. And so what it is, you've got to do the work inside yourself first. Mm-hmm. And once you do that, you lead out and show them this is what it looks like. And I hate to say this, but the biggest thing in my sphere is body image. Mm -hmm. And so I can stand in front of the mirror and be like, oh, my pants are too tight. I need to leave some weight. Then my fifth grader is going, oh, someone at school called me fat. Like she actually did the other day. She goes, I was fat shamed at school. I'm like, why would a fifth grader need to know that saying? Like, why would that be a thing? And so in that moment, I had to be like, this is how I tell her what truth is. And this is how I show her. But I have to show myself like, if I'm telling her God created her in the way that he wanted her to be in his image, then I can't diss this image that's just like him as well kind of thing. But the second way to easily help your child spot a lie is when you hear them say those things, stop them and have them correct it. And the mm-hmm. best way to do it is say, if you can't say that statement and follow it up with in Jesus name, mm-hmm. then it's not truth. And it sounds so silly, but, and we say these mm-hmm. things all the time. So I may trip or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Excuse me, that's something that I'm just putting on as true in my mind. It's a joke in that moment, but it's not. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm yeah. just solidifying that's who I am. But if I were to say, I'm an idiot in Jesus' name, I almost feel like I would see Jesus right there going, no, you're not. That's not who yeah. I say you are. And so if it sounds wrong in that moment, 
then it's not truth. If it does sound correct with that, then it is truth. And so you have to get them to start thinking about those small little things of, no, what I say matters. And I'm actually building a foundation to help me succeed or to tear me down. And it's your job as a parent to help spot that out, but you have to know it for yourself first. That's so true. I, I think about, I always come back to Dr. Kerr Thompson and he says, I'm the best, the best way to be a parent is to do your own, do your own work, mm-hmm. do your own story work. And by recognizing that we show them versus the tendency that I have in this house is to preach to them, but by showing them and living that out, it's so much more impactful. So absolutely. That's so good. I know this is like a question that we ask all the time, but I, it's so important. And I feel like also because the alcohol space is so close to self-help and all this stuff and these things just end up feeling really like surface level, but I still want to talk about it. Why is gratitude so important when we're talking about flipping the script and being in the right mindset and all of that? Yeah. Yeah. I do think it's funny that a lot of the stuff that we do in coaching and things like that people say it's self-help or they say it to age and we're like, no, no, you need to go to the Bible. And I'm like, cool, we are. (laughs) That's what what we're doing. But it all, and I think the Bible talks about it and renewing your mind and doing these things and even be grateful and, and things like that. But gratitude is probably the biggest thing because if we don't set our mind on something and I say positive, and that's another one of those trigger words for people, then we're, allowing it to be negative. And so it's training your brain to this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the good because no matter what your life is like, there's always good or there's hope of good. So in the morning, like I coach people all the time in the morning before you get up out of bed, what are the three things you're grateful for? Let's sit and think about it. And it could just be, I have breath in my lungs. I Mm -hmm. woke up another day. Like it can be small things or like at the end of the day, like it didn't suck as much as I thought it would, like whatever it is. And it might be hard at first, and you may only have those little things that you can think of, but the more you literally start to do it, the easier it'll come and the more things that you will come to mind and will just flow. So during the day, you'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you. There was a day that my daughter and I were out running errands and stuff and I was stressed and like life was chaotic and I'll know this is what we're going to do. And so I said, anytime we can think of something, we're just going to say, thank you, God, for this. So we're driving down the car and I was like, thank you, God, there's no traffic. And then my daughter was like, Thank you, God, that I get to spend time with my mom. And so we would just start saying thank you for these things. And it was like, all of a sudden, like I stopped freaking out and it was better. I'm like, this is actually not a bad scenario. Why am I letting these things stress me out? I'm focusing on what should have been and could have been, but I'm missing what actually is and actually what is good right now. Mm -hmm. This is actually good. And it just helps your mind so much in knowing those things and looking for those things and not trying to seek out the gross and the hard and the negative because there is a lot of it in this world but yeah. there is a lot of beauty and there is a lot of hope as well yeah and not yeah and not just the I love to be not just trying to talk ourselves into we're in this crappy situation and I'm like oh but it's really wonderful no it's actually right. it's a crappy situation but so I don't have to try and positive affirmation my way into this I can actually just find something here that I am grateful for that Absolutely. allows me to, yeah, like the, the traffic. Yeah. That's, and that's just minor. That's not fun, but that does give me more time with the teenager in the car to have a conversation. And so right. okay, in this instance, maybe we'll be a little late for this, but thank you for the traffic because now I get an extra few minutes with my teenager to have a conversation. So there's always mm-hmm. something to find, but not in a, like in the self-help positive affirmation world where it's like, oh, let's try and talk ourselves into this. So I love the differentiation that you present there. And sometimes it's even, it is, the situation is devastating. Like literally it's hard to see something big. And maybe it's that moment that I had a time to pray or I felt the Lord's presence and even the smallest way, I still feel alone. Things are still shattering and falling apart. But in that moment, I have to be like, thank you God that you're still here. Mm -hmm. Thank you that I can trust who you are and that you've never failed me thus far. And so those are the things that I'm thanking him for to help keep my mind focused in the right space, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But the more you look to gratitude, the less you compare the, uh, with against other people, the less you fight against things or feel like you're a failure or, or question your worth and all these things because you're focusing not on yourself. Oh, I am all the things, but you're looking at what you have and what God has blessed you with in that moment. Yeah. So good. So good. Can you then talk a little bit further because this is a daily practice that we all have to practice, right? For sure, for sure. 
but how that becomes easier and easier when you're rooted in truth and when your identity is rooted in Christ. And if someone like I know that uh, alongside my alcohol journey, my relationship probably even as Mead has seen over like us starting the pot, like has just completely transformed. And in order to be able to be good at flipping the script, I have to know like the good script. <laughs> right. I have yeah. to know the good truth. And so yeah. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. First of all, I think reading your Bible is key to that and spending time in a word because that's what truth is. In my book, we talk about like when we highlight the negative scripts or, or we're talking about gratitude or whatever it is, when we can pinpoint that, then we find out what truth is and we rewrite it. We have an old script and a new script. And when you get that new script, it's always backed by scripture. But the more you start understanding and putting that in you, the easier it is for you to check what is not true. It just spills out. It's so funny. Yeah. That's just how it is. It's like when you have a cup and you keep filling it with water and keep filling it with water, if you don't stop, then it's just going to start pouring out. You can't help it. It's, mm -hmm. it's got a capacity. And that's how we are. And not in a bad way, but the more we pour in, it just comes out when we least expect it. And we think sometimes it's a coincidence or whatever. And God, no, I'm showing you this word that you've tucked in your heart. that You've said you're going to remember. Do you remember this is truth? And so in that moment where you can subscribe to a lie or whatever, you're like, no, God says this. Okay, cool. That's what I'm going to listen to. That's what I'm going to do. And it just becomes a natural reaction. Instead of your reaction being like, oh, this or all oh, that, or I'm such a whatever. God's remember, like I formed you in my womb, in your mother's womb before you even thought about or born. Like I crafted you in this way. I did these things or I have you a hope and a future for you. Or, I've done these and it just starts coming to mind. You're like, okay, all right, this is what truth is. If that makes yeah. sense. That makes such good sense. Yeah. So we have, I don't know, this pod, I just, I love this podcast. We, we have the little podcast that could, the backdoor ministry. We've had, <laughs> we've had gals that are like new to the Jesus scene who are listening. Yes. So someone that is like nev literally never cracked the Bible open or we also have like listeners with like church hurt that are absolutely ditched alcohol and are unsure, but are hearing me tonight and they're like, okay, I guess I'll keep listening to you girls. What would you say to like the people that are just brand new interested to learning about truth and flipping the script, all that good stuff? I would say I feel you. And I understand, first of all, church hurt is real. Been there, done that. So find me on social media and we can talk through that. But the cool thing is I've been there, I've done that, and I'm still here. Yeah. Like I still believe that it's all about God and it's less about people because people are, will fail you and will cause problems. So I'm proud of you for being here and I'm proud of you for listening. But I think there's something inside of you that says there is truth. And so the best way to do that is to find people who subscribe to that. You can grab my book if that's easy. I, that's why I wrote it. it. It talks about Jesus in it, but it's less like in your face. And, and it's like a, a stair step in into the yeah. word and stuff, but it'll get you interested in what does the Bible actually say about that? What does he say? Because if you read it, it's the craziest story ever written. Like it's not PG. There's some things in there. You're like, oh my gosh, this had happened. Oh, wow. yeah. um, but the cool thing about it is you get to see a God of the ages and how much he did and how much he cared for you. That's so evident. So I think the goal is to just keep asking questions. Truth comes in searching and seeking out people who are wise. So talk to me, talk to Christy, talk to me, and we'll point you in that direction. But just don't stop. Just keep trying. Yeah. So good. So good. One of the things that you had mentioned, which I think is such a good flip the script topic is, and we don't, we probably, this is probably a whole nother podcast episode, but let's just like touch on it is like the body, <laughs> the body image thing. And uh -huh. yesterday we had Michelle from She Works His Way on and we were talking about, have you met her? Do you know her? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. she's so great. It was our first time chatting with her. She was so good. And she was talking about the red, yellow, green, like ass assessment. And we were talking about the physical, like red, yellow, green. How do you feel about your body? And then I, literally my first thought when she said that was, have I ever felt green about my body ever? I don't know. I can't. I don't, maybe not. So yeah. how do you help, especially all women deal with it, but how do you help coach someone through those negative scripts? Again, I, I'm going to say this, but gratitude is where that falls into because I am going to find something. If I'm looking for it, I'm going to find something I'm not excited about. So I think I would be the same with you where I'd be like, have I ever felt green about my body? Even when I thought I was in good shape, I was like, oh, but I need to 
do yeah. this a little better. Or then I was like, oh, now I'm too skinny. And I look like what, whatever it would be. Like there was never a win or, oh my gosh, someone took a picture of me the other day and I was like, oh, I have such a giant nose. Why do I have a big nose? I didn't. So there's always something that I could be like, oh, this is the worst thing about my body. But if I sit back and look, thank you so much, body. Like I had five pregnancies. I delivered five healthy babies. I had no issues, small complications, but they were healthy. My body did what it needed to do. Like I grew a human. That's incredible. Or I've run two marathons and I'm going to start training for my third, like thanking my body for showing up that day. I'm not hurt. I'm not this. Thank you so much. And so we have to start thanking those things like oh, the stretch mark. That stretch mark is there because you have her right here. Or yeah. this is like this because of that. And so it literally, there's always going to be a moment. The scale is not going to be what you want it to be. Maybe you're a little swollen today, but it's because you, like I put on an event this last week and I was up on my feet all day. And so then if I weigh myself, I'm like, oh, this feels horrible. But I'm like, actually, we had a thousand women come to our church. And they got to hear about Jesus and hear about how they were better together. You're exhausted and your body is pulling in water just to help heal. Don't be mad at it. Do you see what it got to do kind of thing? And so literally you have to just thank it. Thank it for showing up. Thank it for what it's doing. And you know what? If you feel like you're not treating it right, great. There's healthy ways to take care of yourself. But it's not you beating yourself up or being upset about how you look because that's never a win. And it reads. It really reads. You can see women who know or don't feel confident in themselves. And that reads gross. But whatever you look like, even if it's not what you want to be, if you love yourself for it, then you just glow. And then no one cares. No one actually cares. Yeah, so true. So true. Is there other, is there another one or two like negative scripts that you see over and over again? Um, yeah. So I think one of the biggest ones is um, I'm not enough. And whatever variable that looks yeah. like, it plays a lot into failure as well. So I'll, when I go to small groups and I coach them and I get to speak in like breakout sessions and things like that, and I have a small intimate group, we sit down and we say, what's a lie or what's a script that we're believing? And I'm telling you, we're in there for two minutes tops before the person starts sharing and then starts crying. And the next one, and, but it's this moment of, okay, I'm going to sit and I'm going to I'm going to bear my soul. And this is what it feels like to say truth. But it's my daughter was in there one time. She was 13 at the time. And her voice got a little shaky. And she's like, I think the thing that I think is I'm not enough. And I knew that because at home, she's trying so hard to get straight A's and these things. And she comes tell me, mom, I'm sorry, I didn't get this. I'm like, it's okay. I never told you that you had to do this. I never told you that you had to be these things. But we tell ourselves, and I think we've subliminally told our children too, that perfection is the goal. And so that's women can't do that. No one can be perfect. And so in that, we worry about being a failure or we worry that we're not enough. And then we pile it onto ourselves that when we don't meet that goal. We have to strive harder to try to find perfection. And then we can't do that. We beat ourselves up even further for not meeting that goal. And then the girl next to us looks like she has it all together. So we weigh Mm -hmm. ourselves against that. And in all reality, she's in the same boat that we are trying to find that same perfection. And so those seem to be the biggest things that women are dealing with. And there's always the comparison and there's always the the loneliness and there's always that thing. But I think at the root of it, that's where it starts. And then we have to work on out from there kind of thing. Yeah. I actually remember Jess saying when we were at that, that conference together, I think she said comparison is coveting, right? Yeah. yeah. It was like, was, I was like, oh, yep, that is true. Uh-huh. Which yeah. is insane. Comparison is one of those things, it's like a toddler where you see someone else and they have the toy and you're like, why do they always have the good stuff? I the good stuff. Why can't I be good? You are good. Yeah. You are yeah. actually really good. Oh my gosh. I spend so much time saying to both kids, I don't, who told you that you needed to even get that A or uh-huh. make that team or to like, who told you that? I didn't tell you that. But it just goes Absolutely. back to show you what we were talking about at the beginning, that like they're just, they're hearing it from every, mm-hmm. every direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so they assume that's what I have to do. And just society has just taught them that. Like our school system is super like achievement driven and stuff. And so even if uh, my child were to get a bad grade on a test or whatever, then let's pull them in for tutoring. Let's do these things. I'm like, Shh, they have a B. We're worried, but they're worried about their test scores and looking like the best school in the area and so they drill that into the kids and so the kids are like I have to do this or 
I have to perform this way. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not even in the real world. This is going to be a whole lot harder than now's the time where you should, it's fun. Like learning is cool. It's a good time. It doesn't have to be stressful and hard. So we just really flipped the script on what it means to be a human. And we've got to get, we've got to get back to the root and the truth of it all. Yeah. That's so good. It's even crazier over here for the UK listeners, if any, if there are any, they're more, mostly in the States, but we have these national standardized tests all every other year. And uh-huh. just every single school is just like all about the numbers. So yeah. It's just, yeah, it's hard to fight. It's hard to fight. What is one tiny new action that you would leave with our gal listeners today? I want to give you two. One, I okay. can go out and buy my book on Amazon, flip the script. You'll know it's me because it's a girl with pink hair on the cover. <laughs> it's the cover. Um, is so good. Thank you. We actually, one of our fellow coaches, yeah, she's, photo, she's a photographer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah. yeah, she's incredible. She's helping design the, the teen version cover too. Aww, I was like, Can you please? Amazing. you're amazing. <laughs> but buy the book. And I, it's $17. You can get it, but it's a great step in flipping the script on your life and your narrative. You're like, I can't afford coaching. Cool. $17 is the easy in. And I have all my contact information in there. So you can reach out to me. Not only do I have my social media stuff, but I have a, a phone number that you can text or call me. That was so important for me. Like, I, I don't want to be like someone on a high level that no one can reach. I want you to know that I'm actually here for you. But the second thing is before you shut your eyes today to sit down and write out, don't just think it in your mind. Write out three things that you're grateful for, whatever that looks like. Take a moment and write it out. So you may be in the deepest of pits, but what can you be grateful for? And if you have trouble, find me on social media. We'll walk through it to find it. Or you may have had the best day. And so that's great. So then tomorrow when your day's hard, you can look back and say, but yesterday here was some amazing things that happened. But do that. Do those simple things just today. And I guarantee the more you do it, the easier it will become and the better your outlook will be. Yeah. So good. Can you tell everybody where to find you and your socials and all that good stuff? Yes. So you can find me anywhere on social media at J Brittany Estes. That's a whole nother reason why it's J Brittany Estes, but we'll get there. That's a, that's a nickname. <laughs> Brittany Estes was taken. So I had to just get creative and go with the nickname. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, thanks for coming and stopping by. And it was so good yeah. to see you. And Thanks Thank for you for me. all that you're doing. And we're so excited. You'll have to come back when the teen book comes out. Oh, that's so awesome, babe. Yes, of course. I'd love to. So cool. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. You can find all of our episodes at butjesusdrinkwine.com and be sure to follow us over on Instagram, Love Life Sober, and I'm Not Sober, I'm Free. To learn more about what we do, you can visit our websites, meetholandshirley.com and lovelifesober.com. Take a screenshot of this podcast and share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to subscribe to our pod so you don't have to worry about missing a single episode. And if you love what we're doing, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify. This helps more women who are feeling stuck and alone in the overdrinking cycle find hope and encouragement. Thanks, ladies. We so appreciate you. And we'll see you next Monday. Monday.